Hey everyone, before we get into today's video, we have a new donation link. It's down in the description. If you're so inclined, we very much appreciate it. And with that being said, let's get to today's video. As voted on by you, our card spotlight video this week features the powerhouse mana ramp artifact, Soul Ring. Soaring is an artifact costing one mana that you can tap to add two generic mana to your mana pool. Originally printed in Alpha, Soaring has had a huge number of reprints, mostly in early sets and commander products. You can pick up the commander reprints for roughly a dollar, but to acquire an Alpha or Beta edition will cost you between two and three hundred dollars. In addition, Kaladesh also featured this as an invention, which will cost you right around two hundred dollars. Soaring is notorious for being one of the most powerful pieces of artifact ramp in the game. Costing only one mana and generating two means you can play this on turn one and essentially skip two turns ahead in gameplay when you untap on your next turn. Additionally, you can use the two mana from Soul Ring to enable explosive turn one hands. Due to the power level of Soul Ring being exceedingly high, it has been banned completely from Legacy and restricted in Vintage. For a card to require banning and restriction in two of the most powerful formats in the game really speaks for itself. Even though Vintage has restricted Soul Ring down to just one copy, it still hits 64% of the total decks in the current meta, which again speaks to the power level of this card. Outside of Legacy and Vintage, Soul Ring sees massive play in Commander, being featured in over 182,000 deck lists according to EDH Rec. Important to note that Soul Ring has been banned in 1v1 competitive commander. It is still legal in the typical commander format, at least for now. Soul Ring has been the root of controversy in commander for quite some time and has caused an obvious polarity in the player base. On one side, a lot of players really enjoy Soul Ring and find that while it is powerful, it's diminished in power level a lot by having multiple opponents and a lot of interaction. On the other side, some say Soul Ring is a little too powerful and progresses one player ahead of the rest way too often when they draw it on turn one. Both sides have a strong point, but where do you fall in this argument? Let us know in the comment section down below. Having looked at where it's played and why it's powerful, what are the pitfalls around Soul Ring when played? Really there aren't many, an obvious point is that it only creates generic mana and doesn't fix for any certain color. While that could be considered a downside, I think for one mana, I wouldn't expect anything more. Jumping ahead two turns in mana is tremendously powerful regardless of the color. Not to mention, in the decks it's played, you'll find a use for colorless mana without any issues. Additionally, it does fall prey to artifact hate like Ancient Grudge or Shatter, as Sol Ring doesn't really protect itself in any way. Again, I would say for one mana, that's perfectly fine with me. Not to mention, if an opponent runs targeted artifact removal, they most likely will want to save it for something a little more impactful. Soul Ring is the enabler, but destroying something that impacts the board will more likely be their end goal. Frequently we find that cards which were printed during the beginning of the game struggle to find relevance or accessibility for the current group of players. Soul Ring is a prime example, however, of breaking that mold. Seeing play in old formats like Vintage, yet also being a staple for Commander decks everywhere, just goes to show how impactful this card is. In addition, Soul Ring is accessible to everyone, from budget players to pros. It even has relevance to collectors who seek after old, valuable versions of this card. Overall, Soul Ring is a powerful backbone for decks looking to ramp out early. While it does lose a bit of power when it's played in the later turns of a game, it always helps decks reach their endgame as quickly as possible. Thank you for watching this week's Card Spotlight. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like or comment down below, and feel free to subscribe for more content like this. If you would like to vote for the upcoming Card Spotlight, video comment your choice down below or on any of the social media links. The choices for this week are Lord of Atlantis, Champion of the Parish, or Etched Champion. Thanks for watching this week's Card Spotlight, guys. We hope you'll check out the next video, and we'll see you then.